George Soros, the Democratic Party, and Hillary Clinton. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. As you may know, the 85-year-old billionaire is a far-left fanatic whose open society organization advocates no borders anywhere in the world. According to Soros, everyone should be able to go wherever they want for any reason and stay there. Recently, hackers believed to be backed by Russia exposed more than 2,000 documents connected to Soros and his open society. The information very disturbing. Soros has given about $10 million to groups opposed to the policies of Israel. He has funded individuals accusing Israel of war crimes. He has given a variety of grants to people who literally hate the Jewish state of Israel. In addition, Soros has funded investigations of individuals here in the USA who are opposed to radical Islam. People like Pamela Geller, Frank Gaffney, Liz Cheney, and Cliff May. Mr. May will be here in just a few moments. Finally, George Soros has donated about $13 million to the Democrats this election cycle. That includes $7 million to a Hillary Clinton super PAC. Twelve years ago, here's what Mrs. Clinton said about George Soros. We have been given an extraordinary blessing, and at this moment in time, our country needs us. And we need people like George Soros, who is fearless and willing to step up when it counts. Now, to be fair, that soundbite is dated, but the Clinton campaign is accepting money from Soros this year, as stated, and that may present a problem for the secretary. You may remember that Donald Trump got hammered by the media for not disavowing David Duke quickly enough. Duke, of course, a far-right hater. But now we have a far-left individual, Soros, bent on harming Israel, America's strongest ally in the Middle East. So how will the media cover that? Again, Soros, one of the biggest donors to the Democratic Party. Talking Points believes the mainstream press will largely ignore the Soros story, even though it's very important. Does the Democratic Party advocate open borders worldwide? A situation that would make it easy for Islamic terrorists to kill at will anywhere? Does the Democratic Party support the enemies of Israel? Do Jewish voters even know what's happening? Again, a major situation brought to you by Russian hackers and presented to a largely apathetic press when it comes to reporting the truth about the upcoming election. Summing up, the Democratic Party must comment on George Soros and his activities. We've requested a statement from the DNC, and we will let you know tomorrow if they reply. And that's a memo. Now for the top story reaction. Joining us from Washington is the aforementioned Cliff May, president of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. First of all, do you know anything more about Soros and his crew stalking you or whatever they're doing? Well, it wasn't news that we were being trolled, targeted for delegitimization and defamation. And I, as you know, Bill, I run a think tank, a policy institute formed after 9-11 that focuses on national security. That means we focus largely on jihadism, Islamism, radical Islam, call it what you will. We knew there were these various individuals on Twitter. They were tweeting against us. They were publishing articles, mostly in left-wing journals, about us, trying to dig up dirt on us. What we didn't know until last weekend was that George Soros was giving them hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to do this. That, that came as a surprise. All right, so they're paid assassins to try to get you and the other people we mentioned. Now, I don't understand why Soros would single you out when your organization is basically exposing a major threat to the United States and the world, Islamic Jihad. That's what you do. So why would Soros want to muzzle you or hurt you? You know, this was worse five years ago than it is now, but it's not over. There are a lot of those who think, look, this is violent extremism. It has no relationship whatsoever to Islam. You can't even talk about that. If you say, look, not that we have a problem with Islam, but I would say we have a problem with movements within Islam, then you must be an Islamophobe. And I don't mind if people want to debate me, argue with me. People come on your show and debate. It's very edifying. It's very entertaining. But what they want to do when they call you an Islamophobe is they want to shut you down. They right. want to get you it's out like of the debate. It's like a homophobe or a bigot a racist and all that. But why does he want to shut you down? Is George Soros loony enough to think that an open border world, a borderless world, where ISIS could move wherever they want with any problem, is a safe world? Is a good thing? Is he that crazy? 
Apparently, there's even evidence to show that he looks upon the refugee crisis in Europe, and it's a terrible crisis, as an opportunity for him to further his ideas and his policies. And as you pointed out, in, in a Middle East that is melting down, where you have genocide taking place among Christian, Yazidi, and other communities, what he's doing is targeting the one open society in the whole region, and that's Israel. And it's particularly ironic that as he's pursuing what is a kind of McCarthyism, he is the founder of the Open Societies Foundation. How does an open societies, a society foundation, try to shut down debate, try to demonize and delegitimize Israel, and try to do all the kinds of things it's doing, like, now, like taking advantage of the refugee crisis. I think it's safe to say that by taking $13 million from George Soros, the Democratic Party has some explaining to do. Do they not? Look, imagine if the Koch brothers, I don't know them, and that if they tried to demonize groups on the right, um, groups on the left because they were too soft on the Muslim Brotherhood. This would be a big story, it seems to me, in the liberal press. Why isn't it, as you suggest, why isn't this a story, except in conservative media, that you have George Soros pursuing these things? And yes, it is something to, to, that should be considered since he is a huge supporter. Uh, of all these left-wing causes, and yes, of Democrats. Well, he's the second biggest donor, I believe, at this point for the Democratic Party this election cycle. Yet, um, as you pointed out, and, and we're not a conservative show, as you know, Mr. May. I mean, this is a really interesting story. Um, I mean, how an American billionaire um, can pay people hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to attack you and other people who object to Islamic terrorism. I mean, that's the crux of the story. And then that, that very same person involved in that and delegitimizing Israel is the, one of the biggest funders of the Democratic Party. That's huge. That's a huge story. Um, that would be like the Klan coming up with money and pumping it into uh, uh, the Republican Party. I mean, think about it. The Klan, a racist crew, all right, who wants to uh, put uh, Jews and blacks and, and minorities in a bad position. OK, and it's horrifying what they do. All right. As opposed to Soros, a far left crank who wants to harm Israel and wants to shut you up. I mean, I don't understand the big difference between Soros and, and David Duke. Do you? Uh, I, I don't, and I think that members of the more liberal and more progressive press ought to be answering why this isn't newsworthy, why, why only certain things are newsworthy, and why somebody far to the left, and further to the left than, than, than they are, why they won't investigate, report, cover, and, and yeah. talk about these things. Where is and, this? And, they, and where is it? Where I, I don't is think the story? you're going to see it in tomorrow's papers. Now, to be fair, uh, we looked for connections between Soros and President Obama. We did not find any. In fact, the two had a, a falling out of some kind. But Hillary Clinton, you know, she's seven million bucks already into her campaign from Soros. So, again, we need to get to the bottom of this. And, Mr. Mayor, we appreciate you coming on this evening.